Uh, bueno, Carlos, eh, muchas gracias por haber aceptado ser entrevistado para este proyecto de narrativa oral de Latinos en Ohio. Eh, entonces quería preguntarte primero uh, si me puedes dar tu nombre completo, por favor. Uh, mi nombre es Carlos Alexander Lugo. Okay. Soy de Akron, Ohio. Ok, bien. Uh, y hoy es martes uh, 6 de noviembre del 2014. Uh, entonces, qu quiero que me, que me digas, ¿dónde naciste y dónde creciste tú? Uh, naciste en Colombia, uh -huh. uh, durante el año uh, 1999-92. Ok. No, me, you know, 1992. Del... Ok, Lo okay. siento, yo okay. tengo pro uh, problemas con uh, las fechas. Ok, siempre. está bien. Y, uh, pero yo uh, viví uh, para mucho de mi vida en Akron, Ohio. Ok, ok. Um, ¿Desde qué, de qué edad a qué edad? ¿Qué edad? <laughs> es muy complejo. Uh, a las grados, a uh, primera, a la grado tercera uh -huh. en Akron. Uh -huh. Y después de eso, a uh, mi familia, a uh, Vivíamos en Salina, Ohio, uh -huh. en Mercer County. Uh -huh. Es, es un pueblo uh, más pequeño, pero es, es muy simpático. Me gusta mucho. Uh -huh. y, Hay un, un lago. ¿sí? Y un lago. ¡Hey! Sí. ¿Tú sabes? Lo, sí. sí, sí. El otro lado, el otro lago en Ohio. Uh -huh. Hay un de uh -huh. y Grand Lake St. Mary's. Uh -huh. Sí, sí, sí. Y uh, después. Y yo vivía allá para los grados del 5th um, grade y 6th grade. Okay. Y después de eso, uh, vivamos en Akron una otra vez uh, para todo mi colegio y mi, uh, segundo, uh, mi, uh, mi escuela segundo. Secundaria. Okay. Sí, sí. Okay. Um, ¿Cómo fue tu niñez en, en Akron y en Salina? En Salina. <laughs> Solano es muy diferente contra Akron, porque Akron es una ciudad, no es una ciudad grande, pero es una ciudad también. Uh -huh. Y Solano es, es, una, es un pueblo de los uh, campesinos y all American small town, uh -huh. hay un Main Street y todo eso. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Y um, cuando yo viví en uh, Solano, me gusta lo, pero no hay otros latinos allá, uh -huh. no muchos otros latinos allá. Uh -huh. Y a, ve a veces uh, puede verlo en las acciones, o no las acciones, porque they weren't like harsh actions, uh -huh. or like, pero a veces, you know, niños, being niños, uh -huh. pre uh, preguntaronme, uh, Preguntas como, uh, yo no soy racista, pero eres mexicano, ¿qué no? Es like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y <laughs> never thought of it much, pero it is what it is. Pero, ¿Qué les, oh, ¿qué, lo siento. ¿Qué les hacía pensar que eras mexicano? ¿Qué de ti eh, demostraba esa herencia o esa raíz mexicana? Y estás, you're asking me if, like, how, I like, Associate or how did I begin no, to associate? Can't. Like how would they? What was it in in you mm -hmm. that that pointed to them that you were Mexican? Oh, mm -hmm. mi nombre. <laughs> El nombre. Okay. Okay. Claro. Mi nombre. No hay muchos Carlos en Solano. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Pero me encanta mi nombre. Mm -hmm. Me encanta que yo tengo un nombre americano. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yo tengo a primos que no tienen nombre americano. Mm -hmm porque ellos vivieron en el norte o este de Ohio y no puede hacer, hacerlo a un hijo allá, mm. ¿sabes? Mm -hmm. Pero, right, pero mi, mi padre, me encanta mi padre, mi padre siempre tiene la, la estado de mente que mis hijos mm. uh, van a tener nombres orgullos mexicanos. Mm -hmm. Pero en Akron estaban otros latinos en Akron, mm -hmm. me encanta lo, mm -hmm. y Akron es una ciudad small enough mm -hmm. que pueden uh, saber como todo en este, esta comunidad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Piensas, entonces tuviste una experiencia um, tal vez más um, acogedora o welcoming en Akron, en, en cuestión de tu grupo, 
como mexicano, como latino? Uh, I don't want to mess this up in no, Spanish. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. There was never like not an unwelcoming. There was never an unwelcoming feeling, mm -hmm. but it's just in the bigger city, mm -hmm. there was more room, more people, more different points of views where you can get out there and kind of do different things. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the smaller rural setting, mm -hmm. and you did see that in Akron, and mm -hmm. it was small enough where you did have that like community base and mm -hmm. everybody kind of knows everybody or know everybody through somebody else mm -hmm. but it's big enough that you could branch off and there's like festivals mm -hmm. so that we have Spanish masses at um, St. Bernard's downtown uh, you know mariachi bands would play occasionally there was um, my favorite one of my favorite experiences when I was a little kid was there was a boxing match <laughs> and um, and uh, like I guess it's a kind of right, what's the word I'm looking for in English? I don't even know. I'm sorry. Uh, Tangiers is this big building. They also sell banquets. And it's a fancy restaurant. They do like little Sinatra type concerts. Mm -hmm. But uh, Sean Porter, who's a boxer from Akron, mm -hmm. fought like a Mexican guy, like supposedly the national champ, but you know how they hype things up. Mm -hmm. It may have not been, but it was like a fun little. Who won? Sean Porter. <laughs> the hometown kid's going to win. Oh. They all set it up like that. <laughs> Um, bien. Uh, dices tú que tu papá eh, quiso que tú y tus hermanos o tu familia eh, creciera con ese orgullo ¿no? de ser sí, mexicanos sí. y todo eso. Uh, ¿Puedes pensar en algunas tradiciones o, no sé, eh, eventos, eh, cosas que hacían tú y tu familia? que donde tu padre o tu familia estaba tratando de mantener este orgullo, estas tradiciones mexicanas. Yo, yo recuerdo un momento específico. Um, yo creo que tenía cinco años. Estaba un bebé. Uh -huh. Pero vivíamos, uh, vivía, lo siento, <laughs> vivíamos en uh, Colombia at the time, okay. pero um, mi padrino, mm -hmm. Godfather, mm -hmm. mi padrino y mi padre, um, y yo viajamos a Cleveland, mm -hmm. al uh, Museo del Arte, mm -hmm. porque tuviera una, una sh show mm -hmm. para Diego Rivera. Mm -hmm. They were having a showing of um, the paintings. I remember going up there, being driven up there. I slept most of the way because mm -hmm. I always sleep during car rides. But he, I don't, I couldn't remember exactly what reason he gave me. But I remember he did take me up there, and it was, it was such an impressionable thing because mm -hmm. I'm this little baby, and they have these huge murals mm -hmm. on the wall. Mm -hmm. They have like the Aztecs and they're doing the flying mm -hmm. thing around the pole mm -hmm. and there's these elaborate paintings of mm -hmm. the Temple of Mayor mm -hmm. and Frida Kahlo's passing out revolutionario mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, arms to the people and there was one one painting that like really stuck out to me I don't know why but it was um what was the name of it the embarkation of the Spanish at Veracruz mm -hmm. like, something that was just always like I don't know why that one stood out to me maybe mm -hmm. because there was so much going on it mm -hmm. was crazy but I saw that I was like wow you know you're a baby you don't know much about mm -hmm. histories of other people or your own mm -hmm. in the United States for that fact mm -hmm. but I was like there's a lot of history in my culture and like I'm very it's like that was one of the first things where I'm like I'm I know I'm proud to associate mm -hmm. myself with being Mexican-American. Yeah. And then you continue growing up, and there's all these other things. And my dad always imparted me in a strong work ethic sense. And it's like, your grandparents work so hard. I work so hard. It's like, you know what? I'm going to work hard, too. Mm -hmm. I'm glad and blessed to be associated with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When did your dad or grand grandpa come to the U.S.? My, my dad was born in Ohio, so okay. my grandparents came to the U.S. I want to say 50s to 60s. It's always a mm -hmm. topic up for debate. Um, they lived in Donna, Texas, mm -hmm. and they always called Donna, Texas home. But uh, they moved around a lot. They were migrant workers. Mm -hmm. And I actually have um, an uncle 
who was born in Michigan and my dad's born in Ohio. Mm. <laughs> so even to this day, they'll still like jokingly play around the Michigan Ohio State rivalry mm -hmm. in football. Mm -hmm. um, but then my dad was born. I should know this. <laughs> 70s. I. He always considers himself an 80s baby. Late 60s. He was born mm -hmm. late 60s. Mm -hmm. I remember now. But he's an 80s baby. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. Okay. And he was born in Ohio. Mm -hmm. so. And uh. He lives in Stryker, Ohio. I believe he was born in the hospital in Wasayan. Okay. People from, you'll know if you're from that area. <laughs> great, great. Um, ¿Qué historias, esta, esta memoria que tienes, o este recuerdo que tú tienes de haber ido al museo, ¿no? a ver esta, estas pinturas de Diego Rivera, ¿qué, qué cosas eh, te contaba tu papá eh, cuando eras pequeños eh, que, que tenían que ver con tal vez ser mexicano eh, te, te, te acuerdas de algo que te contaba tu abuelo tal vez o tu, o tu papá mi abuelo no, no son histórico, uh, historias específicos uh -huh. pero ellos son los historios de la imagen uh -huh. de la, una imagen grande y tiene elementos mexicanos uh -huh. claro como mi papá me cuenta que uh, ayuda a una bebé en un pelea contra un oso, un uh, león de las montañas mm -hmm. y, y like, like little things like that, cositas como eso. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, they weren't like really, it wasn't a dominating. Mm -hmm. uh, dominating factor in the stories, mm -hmm. like specific things. But they were like things always there. But then you get I got older and then I started finding out things about like the history. Mm -hmm. And then then you get into different stories where mm -hmm. you get to the story where my my great uncle followed Pancho Villa. Mm -hmm. And and like those so that story branched off into another story that my Grandpa apparently had told my dad and my uncle when they were little that, oh yeah, there's a treasure of gold in the mountains in northern Mexico, that supposedly there's a sword hilt somewhere in the basement in one of our relatives' house that's the key to this mountain, <laughs> only you can find it, like the Goonies, but, mm -hmm. so like for me it started off very abstract, uh -huh. but then you got older, you can find out different things, and then they would branch mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. into this other world. Mm -hmm. Do you, you think that's unique of your family, that the storytellers? Oh, yeah. We don't lie. We make the truth more fun, <laughs> <laughs> more elaborate. I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> um, let me see. Um, I know uh, from previous conversations, I know that you love boxing. Oh, yeah. Can yeah. you tell me about that, like how that came about? and? Um, uh, it's, it's another familial thing. Um, I'm sorry I'm switching to English. Okay. I just don't want to yeah. butcher it all in Spanish. <laughs> it's another familial thing. My grandpa was always into boxing. He claims he was the um, state champion in Texas when he was a younger kid. Mm -hmm. But um, it was something that like he started teaching to my uncles and my dad. And some of them took to it, some of them didn't. My dad didn't take to it. But then there was wrestling when we were all loved in love with wrestling too and the story goes one of the first Lugos to come to the US in the 20s right after the revolution spent a lot of his time in La Valle in Texas mm -hmm. and he was a wrestler known as the Panther in the Valley so it's just like <laughs> another thing like that that kind of branched off and so just it was a thing that was always present growing up is I love boxing I love wrestling uh, I never trained in a boxing gym but I would fight my brother all the time <laughs> And it's just a fun thing to like watch pay-per-view boxing fights or watch the Olympic wrestling matches with like my friends and family. Well, who was your or who is your, your favorite boxer? Favorite like, boxer? Mex a Mexican. Of Mexican descent, Conor Alvarez. Okay. Hands down. Okay. Uh, you, of course, you have your, you know your gods in the sport. Your uh, your Cesar Ch uh, Chavez, Cesar Julio Chavez, mm -hmm. um, Cain Velasquez. Like, there's a great history in it, mm -hmm. but right now, Canelo Alvarez. Mm -hmm. <laughs> great, great. Um, eh, mencionas un poco la lengua, ¿no? Estamos, estamos hablando sí, sí. en inglés y en español. 
Uh, ¿Puedes hablarme de esta historia que tú tienes con el español? Uh, ¿Cuándo lo usaste? ¿Cuándo cuando lo usas? Uh, ¿Cómo se usa en tu familia? Mi familia, cuando, cuando queremos poner énfasis en un punto de una conversa, conversación, mm -hmm. usamos español, o si, si está gritando a un hijo... Uh, Regañando. Ya, yeah, it's like, oh, you pay attention quick. La, it's, it's, it's complicado la relación conmigo mm -hmm. con el español y el inglés. Es, un, es como la atmósfera mm -hmm. del mi mundo, pero no es el país mm -hmm. en este mundo. Mm -hmm. ¿Tú sabes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Y me encanta lo. Me encanta lo y hay seguridad en el español mm -hmm. y comfort. Comfort? Comfort. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of comfort. Uh, safety is like a child regressing into like a blanket for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But do not ask me to write a thesis in Spanish. <laughs> I simply can't do it. I'm gonna apologize. I wish I could. <laughs> Pero no puedo. Um, ¿Te hablaban español de pequeño? Un poco, un poco, y po un poco con mi padre, porque mi padre solo habló un poco, porque um, una otra vez es muy complicado. Uh -huh. Mis abuelos siempre estaban trabajando, uh -huh. ¿sabes? Mi uh, abuela uh, trabajó durante la noche uh -huh. y durante el día ella uh, dormió, uh -huh. y mi padre, er, mi abuelo, trabaja todo el día y durmió toda la noche. Entonces, uh, no, no, no aprendieron a la español a mis padres o mis tíos. Entonces, nosotros aprendamos en la escuela. Y la escuela está bien, pero es escuela en el país, en Ohio, y no tiene una base fuerte para uh, todo uh, de, uh, for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. y Pero tú usabas un poco de español con tu familia, con sí, tus sí, primos. Sí. Con... Y sí, y tenemos esta base y hablamos con, mis, uh, con mi familia, con mi padre, con mi hermano. Mm -hmm. Pero, again, it's comforting Spanish. It's, you know, it's daily conversation. Mm -hmm. Es But español casero, casero, como diría. Casero, I like that word. Yeah, casero, yeah, yeah, yeah. sí, sí, sí. You know, it's shouting, it's putting emphasis, it's living, it's like, it's very animated, but it's, it's definitely not like when you go to school, when I went to school and tried to use that in like the school setting, in the mm -hmm. class, and my teacher didn't know what I was saying half the time. And I remember one time, una vez uh, estaba escribiendo una papel en la, uh, colegio uh -huh. uh, y yo usé la palabra chancla, uh -huh. chancla para los uh, uh -huh. sandals ¿Sí? y mi, uh, mi maestra uh, creyó que chancla estaba una palabra Mano. slang, oh. no, slang word y she always would, uh, not yell at me, but like scold me, like, you gotta stop using these slang words, you gotta stop, you gotta use this. In an academic sense, I'm like, oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> and we were writing, we had to describe these people in the photo, and I was like, uh, I was like really just trying to reach. I was like, at the end of the day, I'm tired. I'm trying to reach for like just things to describe them so I can get done and get out of school. <laughs> and I wrote, oh yeah, and they're all wearing chanclas. <laughs> I remember I got the paper back, and there's a big red X for the word chancla. Don't use slang. <laughs> Hay otras anécdotas así eh, de palabras que tal vez te corrigieron tus maestros o, o que no conocían mm. otras eh, otros hablantes del español. Ya. Ya no sé, um, estoy creyendo, so, oh, lo siento, estoy pensando, uh, una vez uso la palabra desmadre. <laughs> because it was, I was trying to describe to my teacher, uh, lo siento, estaba hablando con mi maestra mm. y um, uh, yo, 
I was describing driving to school mm -hmm. and it was snowy winter in Northeast Ohio, so mm -hmm. I was trying to describe the roads like, yo, they're crazy. Mm -hmm. But she was like, this madre. Carlos, que es un this madre. This madre, this madre, this madre. It's un muy loco. It's chaotico. Yeah, chaotico. She was like, She pulled out the dictionary on me, <laughs> looked it up, and she's like, you're right this time. I was like, I'm going to try it. Yeah. Uh, das madre y que mas, que mas. Hmm. No soy seguro. Mm -hmm. no Quizás es porque, like, como yo soy un, uh, yo soy de la segunda generación mm -hmm. en América. Mm -hmm. Y at this point, you started mixing, my, my Spanish started getting mixed with, you know, TV Spanish and my mm -hmm. other friends, you know, mm -hmm. there's a, yeah, everybody watches MTV3, so everybody knows the same words. Sí, you know? claro, claro. <laughs> so maybe that erases a little, or crosses mm -hmm. the bridges a little bit. Claro, claro. Um, Carlos, ¿qué uh, trabajos has tenido en aquí en Ohio? ¿Qué tipo en Ohio? De que, mm -hmm. okay. oof. <laughs> I've had, personally, uh -huh. a uh -huh. lot. Uh, yo trabajé como un, uh, en un landscaping. Mm -hmm. HVAC, mm -hmm. heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, and a poco de construction mm -hmm. in high school, mm -hmm. in the college. Uh, durante mis años en la universidad, en OSU, lo trabajé para un uh, camp. Mm -hmm. Estaba un uh, camp director mm -hmm. for the wrestling camps here mm -hmm. during the summer for little kids. Uh, I was a lifeguard. Mm -hmm. I love that job. Um, soy un mesero. Mm -hmm. No, no, lo siento. Mesero, 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 okay. mesero. Y también yo trabajé en, uh, en Minnesota um, como un, yo no sé la palabra, pero I was basically a glorified uh, junk man, garbage man. And it was a moving <laughs> company and we did moves uh -huh. and I would uh, occasionally we would move these people but also oh we can also haul out trash mm -hmm. so I spent the majority of my time moving trash into a garbage <laughs> truck we go to the dump and we dump it. Okay. Yeah, Lifeguard. Okay. <laughs> me encanta trabajando con los niños, me encanta hacer uh, outside, mm -hmm. el sol, mm -hmm. me encanta nadar. Mm -hmm. Ah, no, ahorita, ahorita yo tengo un trabajo con uh, potential, con mm -hmm. potencial. Mm -hmm. so, uh, soy una research assistant en esa proyecta aquí para Ohio State. Mm -hmm y estoy trabajando con niños en el Spanish Immersion School. Oh. Y, but, pero we just started. Okay. So, that's but we just started that, so we'll see how it goes. Okay. Yeah. Um, ¿Cuál es eh, creciendo cuando tú eh, recuerdas tu niñez y esta identidad ¿no? de, de mexicano con tu nombre, Carlos Lugo? Eh, ¿Qué significaba para ti y con tus amigos de la escuela, eh, ¿veías tal vez alguna diferencia eh, o era celebrada tu, esa diversidad en tus escuelas? ¿Te veían diferente? ¿Te trataban diferente o no? Eh, ¿Qué piensas? De sí, sí, sí. Um, definitivamente estaban diferente porque definitivamente en Akron Ohio específicamente hay una, una influencia si uh, estás, ¿cuál es la palabra? Anglo. Mm -hmm. sí, um, tienes una herencia italiano, mm -hmm. Irish. Mm -hmm. Yo no sé la palabra en español, pero irlandés. Irlandés. Irlandés mm -hmm. o greco. Mm -hmm. Y casi es todo. Mm -hmm. y, y, each one of those has their own, like, oh, there's an Italian fest, so mm -hmm. yeah, there's an Irish fest, there's mm -hmm. a Greek fest in the summer, and I love going to those. But it's definitely different because they all have their own pride, prideful heritage. So when I was growing up with them, they're all my good friends. Growing up with them, it's like, oh, well, my heritage isn't these things. Mm -hmm. My heritage is Mexican-American. Mm -hmm. And it definitely, um, I got, it got to be different 
and I got to break off from like the normal kind of branches that like everybody had in school because mm -hmm. everybody had these very some things in common. But I got to talk about, oh yeah, dead, dead, dead. oh yeah, my grandparents mm -hmm. are migrant workers, mm -hmm. and like. Piensas que eh, era una oportunidad para educar a tus amigos o a tus. A mis amigos, claro, mis amigos, especialmente mis amigos que siempre uh, venían a mi casa. Uh -huh. Uh, my grandparents, mis abuelos, siempre vivieron con, con, uh, con nosotros uh -huh. cuando uh, eran niñas. Uh -huh. Y they were exposed to like, cosas como migas, com uh -huh. comida, uh -huh. pasole. Y mi, mi abuela encanta sus uh, soap operas. And through uh -huh. these things, uh -huh. it gets down to like the more academic sense. Uh -huh. Like they would break down, oh, yeah, yeah, so what's the history? Oh, there's a civil war. Uh -huh. Oh, you find your yeah, family history in the civil war and this and that. And it's like you, it breaks off definitely. And it's like that close uh -huh. when you're always with somebody uh -huh. and you're always exposed to these other things. Uh -huh. You do develop a great appreciation. Like they, uh -huh. there was definitely many opportunities and they always took advantage of it to learn about like my close friends about like my history and it works in both ways and mm -hmm. I have a great knowledge of their history as well. That's great. Um, tu experiencia aquí en la universidad como latino, eh, ¿cómo ha sido esa experiencia? Eh, eh, ¿Cómo llegaste? Puedes contarme este like journey, ¿no? ¿Cómo llegaste aquí a la universidad? ¿Y cómo has eh, acarreado esa identidad de ser latino, un, la, un latino, un vaca y latino, no? Es, es muy, yo creo que es muy único porque cuando yo llegué a la universidad, um, yo tuve esta historia cuando a uh, mi, mis otros amigos latinos en Ohio, en Akron y en Salina, uh, casi solo mexicano, tú sabes, y yo, yo me llegué aquí en OSU y me encontré amigos del, um, de la herencia cubano, boricua, yo no sé, no, I didn't know like Lorraine was a predominantly Puerto mm -hmm. Rican town mm -hmm. and I would have never known that because mm -hmm. like I don't go out there, I had no reason to go out there, mm -hmm. but yo, I found like all these different cultures, mm -hmm. like of the Latino experience in Ohio, mm -hmm. and so diverse. And when you're growing up, we're Mexican, oh, you're Mexican too. We had the same heritage of mm -hmm. growing up. Oh, well, our grandparents came here to work. Sure, sure, sure. And mm -hmm. yeah, move everywhere. We have family in Texas. Oh, you too. And it was very common, but, so you kind of build that idea up as being Latino. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sure, oh yeah, New York has a more Puerto Rican influence, mm -hmm. and California has a Mexican influence, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. But then I got here and you saw these different stories in Ohio, mm -hmm. in my own backyard. Mm -hmm. And I'm always an Ohio fool. I'll profess <laughs> my love for Ohio mm -hmm. all the time. And I felt not ashamed, but I was like, oh man, I was, I messed up. I didn't realize there were all these other mm -hmm. stories, these histories mm -hmm. in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Great, so there's more pride maybe? Definitely, than definitely, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it definitely created a bigger world for me. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, ¿Cuál es una de las historias de tu juventud que no. recuerdas, like with a special fondness, or like, you know, like I remember when I used to do this, or I remember, o mi, mi papá, ¿verdad? Me llevaba, no, no sé, something. Lo siento. <laughs> ¿Sabes qué? Pascua. Okay. En Pascua okay. tenemos estas uh, hueves con confeti mm -hmm, mm -hmm. en, el, en el Los cascarones. Centro. Los cas Is that the word for uh -huh. them? Cascarones. cascarones. Uh -huh. I never knew the word for them. Mm -hmm. But that was, I knew they were a Mexican thing yeah. because no one else ever knew about mm -hmm. them. But my family looked forward to them every year. Mm -hmm. My grandma would have cartons on cartons on cartons saved up the entire year. Mm -hmm. And I would get handfuls and we would run around just smashing them on that. <laughs> Uh, siempre usamos los en, durante Pascua en la casa de mis abuelos cuando ellos vivieron en Stryker, Ohio. Okay. Y tiene una, una yard grande. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of room. It's a country town. Mm -hmm. Y todos mis primos, and hay muchos, hay muchos, 
we were running around and smashing them on each other's heads, mm -hmm. jumping up, running up mm -hmm. trees. But mm -hmm. yo creo que esa es una historia de mi aventura que me encanta. Me encanta. Qué bueno. Sí. ¿Piensas continuar esa tradición con tus hijos en el futuro? Oh, sí, claro. Uh -huh. Got to learn to be quick. Claro. <laughs> they, need claro. A, they need better reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> claro. Um, <clears throat> Eres joven, eres todavía sí. muy joven, eh, pero ¿cuál ha sido el momento más orgulloso de tu vida hasta ahora? Es un pregunta muy profundo que no. <risa> Parece, ¿verdad? Uh, most proud moment. Cuando yo llegué aquí en Ocio, eh, mi padre es dropping me off and like getting situated for the first time and we always moved around a lot like you know like I said I moved we moved all around Ohio mm -hmm. but now they had they had hit a point and they're moving to Texas I'm choosing to stay in Ohio mm -hmm. move with my brother and so we'll see each other during Christmas but it's not like I'm gonna be like everybody else of my friends like mm -hmm. drive home for the weekend or mm -hmm. like crash at the couch mm -hmm. it's So they're getting ready to go like away, away. Mm -hmm. My dad's kind of dropping things off for me. He's like, he looks at me, he goes, "You ready for this?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. ready for this." And he's he's starting to tear up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Me and him are both softies. <laughs> he, I'll never outrightly admit it, but <laughs> we're emotional guys. Mm -hmm. Starting to tear up a little. Looks at me, he goes, "No, I'm proud of you." And mm -hmm. that was that was a very profound, very proud moment for me. Mm -hmm. You know, going to college, going to OSU, the place, this the primary university in the state I love mm -hmm. and it's the same institution that my dad had graduated from. Okay. He's a he's a oh, oh, is he we have we have we have deep history here. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. My, Tell they, me about that. My dad met my mom in OSU. Uh this is okay, so this is back in the seventies, right? Mm -hmm. My dad's looking for college options. One of my uncles went to the Navy, my other uncle went to Toledo. He's only a couple years older than my dad. My dad's looking for college options and he goes, well, I'm going to be paying for it by myself. So he looked for the most cheapest option. Mm -hmm. Back then, it's different than OSU now. Mm -hmm. OSU was the cheapest option, so he applied to OSU and got in. And he met my mom here years, years later. He eventually graduated with a degree, I want to say, in exercise physiology. Mm -hmm. Um, he continued working. He got his uh, medical degree here at OSU as well. Oh, okay. So I'm very proud to be here and kind of continue that tradition. Yeah. I'm not going to be a doctor, <laughs> though. Um, I'll, but what I would really love to do is um, would like to get my MBA from Ohio State after my undergrad and join mm -hmm. What is your career? Studying? I'm an international studies uh, student. It means you get kind of like a combination of both literature, culture, politics, and like economics. It's, you focus on one certain area in the world. Mm -hmm. I chose Latin America. Mm -hmm. And even that in and of itself kind of stems and permeates like my relationship with my grandparents. Mm -hmm. I always understood like there's a greater world out there mm -hmm. and I wanted to like be more of a part of it. Mm -hmm. So I took that as my major focus and then I'm also getting my minor in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Esta es otra pregunta profunda. <laughs> ¿Qué significa Ohio para ti? <laughs> Ohio. Ohio es... Ohio es yo. Ohio es, es mi amor. Es mi... It's the center of the map. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's America en un estado, yo creo. Mm -hmm. It's there are these Midwest values, and that love, that family, that togetherness that they always preach. But then there's also the work ethic. You will not see many other states. And it's just, this state's been so good to me and my family. I go, like, I travel everywhere. I've lived in a lot of different places. I lived in San Antonio for a while. I lived in Mankato, Minnesota, which is terribly cold. Yes. Got negative 50. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to these other places, and I lived in small towns. I lived in big cities. Uh, but something always calls me back to Ohio, and it just, it 
almost transcends like word value. I can't really find the right word right now, but it, I love Ohio so much. Like it's everything to me. And I love this state, which is why again I was excited about my most proud moments being dropped off at OSU. But because it's the premier institution in this state, the state that's done so much for me. LeBron James comes home, but actually at the same time, uh, my my family's planning to move back to Ohio too. They found new work, new jobs, so they get to come back too. And we're joking around. The funny joke in my family right now is, oh, everybody's coming home. <laughs> for uh, living in Texas, you know, you think you're ready for warm weather, and like, oh, this is gonna be it. We're gonna live everything out out here. It's like it's gonna be warm. It's gonna be nice. And it's like, you know what? You just can't escape the Midwest. It's uh, this is always something calling you back to it. For me, for my family at least. It's it's definitely I don't know, I'm getting kinda of lost here no, trying to describe it. But it means a lot and a lot it of does, different things. It definitely does. Um like, in this new we live in a new world, right? A transnational world. And there's all these different peoples in the US, different heritage. I kinda like to think like you don't need to be like, because you know, living in San Antonio is primarily Mexican influence, which was awesome. I loved it, especially with my study of uh, area studies. Like, I'm all about this. But you can be like Latino, you can be Mexican, you can be proud, and you can move from Ohio. You don't have to be close there geographically. You don't have to be, you know, from Michoacan or, you know, from the border or from Cali. We have all this in the Midwest. We're here too. This is our state too. I'm like puro Ohio. Mm -hmm. Y puro Latino. You see, puro Latino. Ah, puro Latino, puro Ohio. That's good. That's, I like. I like that. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add that I haven't asked about you, about your experience as Latino in Ohio? Mm, I thought my head. You asked some very, very. <laughs> inside of questions, they were great. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to get here and talk about it. I can, like, like I said, I'll profess my love for Ohio. <laughs> very good. But I'm glad to have the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.